Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about the various elements of grace and the work of salvation. But now that we've gone over the various types of grace, the states you can be in on your road to salvation and so on, I'd like to close with a better explanation of a few points I made earlier. While the various states of unredeemed, redeemed, justified, and saved can be understood with some good general rules of thumb, there are usually one or two exceptions to those rules, so I want to describe those exceptions in a bit more detail, just in case there was any danger of confusion. First, in the last episode, I said that with regard to whether you need to die to be saved, things get a bit murky around certain rare biblical people, and to explain what I mean, I want to share the Bible passages that refer to the fates of those people, Enoch and Elijah. Enoch is referred to as Henoch in the Douay Rams Bible that I quote from in my episodes, but most other versions remove the H. And Henoch lived sixty-five years and begot Methuselah. And Henoch walked with God and lived after he begot Methuselah three hundred years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Henoch were three hundred and sixty-five years. And he walked with God and was seen no more because God took him. Genesis five twenty one to 24 While it doesn't overtly say that God took him alive, it's a very uncommon passage. Only three people in the Bible are referred to as having walked with the Lord, the other two being Noah, Genesis 6, 9, and Levi, Malachi 2, 4 to 6. It's clear that Enoch was special, but as to whether or not he died, that's ambiguous. As for Elijah, called Elias in the Douay Rams Bible, a much more thorough description is given of what happened to him. And as they went on, walking and talking together, behold, a fiery chariot and fiery horses parted them both asunder, and Elias went up by a whirlwind into heaven. 2 Kings 2.11 He could have been killed by the whirlwind on the way up, or by any number of other things, but it's still kept pretty ambiguous in the verse itself. This is why I say that it's unclear whether Enoch or Elijah died. Their bodies went missing, but whether they died or not is an open question. Finally, in episode 367, I mentioned that Mary, the Blessed Mother, was the only being who was redeemed before Jesus died on the cross. This touches on a hard theological topic, which was addressed, as I mentioned, by Blessed John Duns Scotus. There was a belief, which many Catholics held at that point, and which has since become a doctrine, called the Immaculate Conception of Mary, which stated that when Mary was conceived in her mother's womb, she was completely without original sin. However, even St. Thomas Aquinas, one of, if not the greatest theologian in the history of Catholicism, hadn't been able to justify this belief because of a passage from the Gospel of Luke, which says, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Luke 1, 46-47 If Mary were born without sin, would it be correct to say that God was her Savior? If so, what did he save her from? Dun Scotus argued that God, who is not bound by the constraints of time, could retroactively apply his redemptive sacrifice to Mary before it even took place. Furthermore, he argued that it was more proper for God to do this in the case of at least one person, since saving at least one person perfectly from original sin would be a more excellent thing, and therefore more worthy of God. I would say that it again demonstrates the perfection of God that he used his perfect sacrifice to perfectly save one person, who would perfectly avoid personal sin as well and become his mother. So, Mary was saved by Jesus, but in this case, the effect of Mary being saved took place before its cause, the saving sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, so that she was never actually unredeemed, rather like saving someone from being run over by stopping them from running into the road, instead of treating them for their injuries afterwards. Next time, we'll start up a whole new season with some more questions about the faith, but this time, the questions that I personally wrestled with. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.